No. no don't <laughs> Stick our heads. I have it. I have it on. Sure. Electronically. Okay, everybody's here for corn work. Uh, oh, no, if everybody please rise. Councilwoman Karumba, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Roll call, please. Mayor Simmons? Here. Councilman O'Flynn? Here. Councilman Gibson? Present. Councilman Forbes? Here. Councilwoman Caramba? Here. Councilman DeWitt? Present. Councilwoman Carr? Here. Okay, we have just, just a little bit of, uh, we're going to start with the um, remainder of our city council meeting from this morning. Governor DeSantis was in town, so we took a recess and we will uh, reconvene. And Arlene, I think, Derek, you're okay. We've talked through the issues that you have. Okay, so Arlene, I believe you and Matt have some. So at this point, I'd like Matt Feeney to come up and give you an update on the um, Imperial River and our TM uh, DL projects that we have. And we have recently had a lot of public, public interest in these projects that we have and the reporting. So we wanted to review for council what we're doing and what potential pro projects we have for the future. Good afternoon. Uh, I'll, I'll remain brief but TMDL stands for total maximum daily load uh, we have a TMDL in uh, the Imperial River for nitrogen this is the area that has been deemed uh, just as a refresher uh, impaired for nitrogen and we uh, have entered into a cooperative agreement with the state to work on projects to help reduce that nitrogen so it's just going to give a little update uh, part in particular projects that we do in the city that count towards uh, our reduction quotas really are only in this this green shaded area so we're we're looking at areas this this line would be Bonita Beach Road so the developments east of Bonita Beach Road on the south side uh, and then this this kind of shaded area that you see that moves into towards the downtown so we've we've been hard at work really since 2012 uh, in in achieving those goals we have a, a laundry list of projects which are you really can't see that are that are listed here they range from education and outreach activities that we do to um, street sweeping uh, to the actual downtown project which got us about 500 pounds of nitrogen credit to work that Bonita Springs did in the past uh, in terms of septic tank removal we were able to uh, do some calculations and work with the state to get 912 pounds of credit there so our goal is 9,903 over a 15 year period of time. Currently we have about 6,291 pounds remaining. Uh, for planning purposes, and this, this number does vary quite a bit, but construction costs without land acquisition uh, on a planning level, we kind of estimate they cost us about 650 pounds per, $650 per pound of nitrogen that we actually reduce. Things that we've done, I've, I've mentioned a few. Uh, one of the big ones was the, the downtown project. We were able to get 526 pounds, uh, primarily through the exfiltration trench, which these photos kind of show the construction sequencing of. Uh, that basically forces stormwater out into the ground uh, where it's treated by the microbes that live within the ground and they remove the nitrogen. That's, that's how we get nitrogen. That's how we get the credit. I mentioned septic tank conversions. We were able to get about 912 pounds of credit for work that BSU really had done over the last 20 years. Uh, it was only the septic tanks that fell within this, this T-stained footprint. And it was furthermore reduced to only the septic tanks that could demonstrate um, connectivity to bodies of water. So if you look in this image here, uh, these are basically flow paths, underground flow paths, migration paths. So these these septic tanks in this illustration we would not have received credit for because it, they did not actually migrate uh, by the mathematical calculation to the water so it's 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 a limited number when you talk about septic tank conversion that you actually can get credit for uh, the bioreactor is ongoing uh, that is a technology we built off of Feltz Avenue uh, we anticipate that to see load reductions anywhere from 80% to 43%, which is uh, pretty impressive compared to the cost that it 
it takes to construct something like that uh, and what we typically see. Typically, technology will get us 19 to, to 40 percent if, if you're lucky. Uh, so something that has the possibility to, to do 80 percent is significant. That being said, um, we're, we're working through testing that right now. You may see a big green tank there uh, to, to demonstrate that to the Department of Environmental Protection. It's not an off-the-shelf approval efficiency. So it's something really we're looking to for the future. Uh, Pine Lake Preserve, uh, this is another project that it is actually in for FEMA funding for flood reduction because it does have a flood reduction component. But we've, we've done load calculations on it and we see it potentially contributing about 850 pounds of nitrogen removal. Uh, it is a, essentially a restoration project. Uh, we have all of the permits. We did receive the, the Federal Army Corps permits late last fall. Uh, so really we're waiting for the funding to come through from the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program through FEMA, and then we'll be constructing that. Education and outreach. Uh, initially when, when the agreement was set up with the, the state, they were, they they granted the city about 835 pounds of credit for education and outreach to communities and folks within our greater community here uh, to, to educate them on wise use of fertilizer, right plant, right place, native plants, uh, and those types of things that would eliminate excess nitrogen being uh, put into our system. So we've, we've done several things. We've held workshops. Some of these are, well, right there, this is here at City Hall. Uh, and, and worked in kind of a consortium of folks that were also giving education. We've also uh, been partnering with the, the local Cocoloba chapter of the Native Plant Society, really pushing kind of the Florida Yards and Neighborhood program. And uh, we have kind of a, an outdoor classroom that we've been working towards out on a piece of city property and uh, might be coming back in the future with uh, a memorandum of understanding with that group so that we could uh, quantify the training that they're able to do, provided the city uh, can work with them through an agreement, and uh, really kind of formalize that so that when, when we go through certification with the Department of Environmental Protection, we can show them that we, you know, we're actually doing the education. Uh, are there, this is, you know, this is what it's all about. This is the Caloosahatchee River at the Franklin Locks. Um, this is what we're trying to prevent, and this is what we're trying to protect. Um, so with that, I conclude. Any questions? Council? No, keep up the good work. Yeah, great. No. We're also going to provide Thank a you. Copy Hit the gas this. would be my... Yeah, I was going to say, mm -hmm. keep your foot on the gas. Um, we'll provide a copy of this on the city's website, so if anyone would like to access the information. And as Matt said, in the future, we're going to be bringing forward some additional memorandums of understanding with these organizations and groups. Um, and seeing what we can do to also provide more public outreach, which will in turn help us with the credits that we're trying to accomplish. Thank you. Real, just one quick comment, which is I've been watching the uh, meetings of the uh, Blue Algae Task Force to Cyanobacteria, and it's interesting. Uh, the scientists are starting to ask questions about, well, exactly what's the source of this problem, you know, which obviously is nitrogen, but uh, specific. And it's part of the discussion we've had here in the city, which is, you know, we're Imperial River's impaired. It's been impaired for years. As penance for our sins, we're doing these projects, which is good. But it would be great if the state starts to think more about fine-tuning the, the solution to the problem, as in exactly where is this coming from and how can we best take steps. It's not all non-point pollution. So we're doing what we can. Staff's doing what they can. So thanks. Greg? Yeah, just a quick comment question. Matt, you, uh, if you go back to the first couple of slides where you said, what's our um, goal and what are, where are we at on our goal? My question is, when, once we reach that goal, are we going to, again, going back to keeping our foot on the gas, we're going to change it then and make another goal so we have something to strive for instead of just settling? Well, um, I think what Councilman O'Flynn uh, said it goes a long way. You know, a lot of this is based on model. I, I gave a presentation a few years ago to City Council about the, the nuances of how this stuff's modeled. Um, what I was talking about with the bioreactor is really more of an actual, right? Measure an actual technology uh, and moving into that realm, and that's, that's the work we're doing. I suspect that, you know, as the state works with us, 
Um, to answer your question, I, d I, I don't know, but you know, they'll, they'll have to, to work with us in evaluating the condition of the river if we achieve that goal to see whether, whether, we've, whether we've hit the mark or whether we need to work on some other things. It, it's, it's a dynamic topic. Um, obviously, there's a summit going on right now that the governor's at, uh, but I think there's more science that needs to be done on, on all of these aspects. We're, we're doing what we can. And Thank you, Greg. Anybody else? Arlene? Um, the next item we have before you is I'd like John Dahmer with Community Development to come forward. We have been, uh, I, I believe council has also received some inquiries, but staff is receiving inquiries on the schedule of the proposed changes to the land development code regarding uh, the Bonita Beach Road visioning and quadrant plan. And this is the, the land development code side of the features that we looked at. And I'd like John to kind of go over a, a target schedule so that we can keep um, those folks who have projects working forward uh, on, on time with that schedule. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Um, we are moving these, this beach road overlay forward. We had a last discussion with you. I forget exactly what that date was, but we discussed the idea of including uh, uses within the ordinance for different sections of that roadway. And as a result, we're making those changes to bring back to you. We've had several uh, interested parties that uh, would propose uses along that corridor that would be permitted under the proposed ordinance but are currently not permitted. So what we wanted to do was at least get on the record with you an agreement as to what the schedule would be so that they knew how to time their, their permitting. Uh, right now, with your agreements, uh, I would look to do an LPA meeting in September to uh, have their review and then in October have your two hearings uh, for your review and hopefully approval. So unless there is an issue with, with having an uh, adoption meeting in October, we would so like to move forward. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. What? Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Uh, Councilman Gibson? Did you have a question? Yeah, Fred. Oh, well, I can ask it after. Okay, okay. yeah, go up. Sorry, Aye. Peter. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Fred? I, I would like to see that list that's going to go to LPA before LPA gets it. I would think you, we, like we should have a like a little preliminary discussion because we may see something in it that we think should be in it that isn't, and we may see something that's in it that we think shouldn't be. And that'll just, I think it would just save a little time. Okay. The schedule I proposed to you is based upon the type of advertising that we have to have. If we're able to get this scheduled on there as a discussion, I'd be happy to do it. If for some reason there's a problem with it, I'll make sure you all get a draft uh, individually so that we can at least have individual conversations. And, that, and then if we want to change it, we can change it before it gets to LPA? Of course. Okay. That's what we'll want. You and three others, Fred. That's how it works. <laughs> John, anything else? No, sir. Okay. Dynamite. Thank you. Arlene? I just have two additional updates. One is um, Lee County staff has been working with our finance director, Ann Wright, to uh, they have been distributing the Lee County uh, gas tax interlocal agreement that's going out today to all the jurisdictions. Although that our, our actual agreement expires on the 31st, we are planning on bringing it to you on September 4th. We will be backtrack covered to the 31st. Um, and the methodology that they are reviewing is 50% population, 50% based on center line miles. Um, so we'll get a new, we'll have the updated distribution list and what each of the jurisdictions are receiving by your next meeting for your review. Right, right. right. Council, any? That's where we are now, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be bringing the other, all of, there was, a, I think, approximately three other jurisdictions that weren't on that same schedule and they were on a 30-year <laughs> contract. Now every jurisdiction will be on the same methodology. Okay. Um, the only other item I wanted to update you on is um, our Parks and Recreation Department has been uh, coordinating with the Lee County Sheriff's Office, the actual Youth Athletic League, the SAL League, uh, to bring forward a program um, for youth middle school and high school students at our recreation center uh, for a day of healthy fun, as well as a first responders dodgeball tournament. So it'd be dodgeball for the youth and then dodgeball for the first responders. Um, there would be no fees associated with that with the project. What it is is you would bring donations to the Benita Springs Assistance Office and, the, and they're looking to do the event in October and the hope is that um, they could then target food items needed for folks at Thanksgiving at the holiday season. So it's going to be an adopted parks and recreation program. It's not a co-sponsorship. It's a it's an intergovernmental uh, 
program that we're going to provide together for the youth and for and then anyone can come and watch the first responders team okay great that's it that's all I have okay uh, mayor and council member reports Amy <laughs> um, I just attended the uh, horizon council meeting and they're continuing their work and I'm going to be attending the transportation general meeting on uh, Friday so I might have more information but their their focus remains uh, attainable housing uh, retention of existing businesses and uh, obviously transportation That's it. Great. thanks Amy Greg no just remind everybody about the library opening I'll let you oh, your library I'll let you do more of it oh, sure no just uh, I'll let you do more. sure thing go dive ahead. in no, 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 no. dive in you've I'm been good. right here for it no, go ahead I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, Laura. Uh, well, the fire department also won an award of excellence for technology and innovation. Uh, yeah, it was a big deal. It saved millions good of dollars. Good thing it wasn't up to Greg, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was up to me. Yeah. <laughs> and they um, sort of got a hold of their inventory really tight, so all the all the um, trucks will be fully loaded and properly and. They won't have to, and they'll order only what they need. So anyway, it's wonderful. They got the great award. And then a constituent asked if, well, if they, got, if they do that, can we not put our permits on file and not store them in dry storage? So, you know, are we moving toward that or? To, to electronically based storing them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the project updates that community development is bringing forward um, in the next fiscal year, correct, is scanning past documents and uh, permits that you have as well and then and then and then we'll be looking at also eventually able to provide that search online possibly too. Mm -hmm. so. the, the whole purpose is transparency so that way uh, everything we would have be searchable off of our website uh -huh. what we what we will need to work on though is that it will all have to be ADA compliant so we have to ensure that the mm -hmm. scan documents are scanned in such a manner so that they're ADA compliant for the website okay great thank you right. thanks Laura Pete uh, just one thing, Arlene and I have been working on a, a potential formula with respect to better access for Benita Springs residents to Lover's Key, uh, somewhat back and forth with uh, Eric Draper, head of the Florida Parks, working with Mark Generalis. So I don't want to take time up here, but anybody wants a briefing on what we've been talking about, to speak to Arlene. Um, that's it. Great. Thanks, Peter. And thanks for your great work on that. Right. Mike. Um, I told... Uh, Kathy McGrath that I'd mentioned that the library is opening soon and we have the ribbon cutting on Monday. Um, and also uh, to uh, welcome downtown coffee and wine to uh, Old 41. Uh, they just opened uh, last week and doing a great job down there. A uh, lot of activity out on the sidewalk in that area, nice. tables outside, so they're doing well. Great. Thanks, Mike. Fred? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to give you a couple important things that is going on in Florida League of Cities. First of all, and, and a lot of people made this, what I'm going to announce, possible. The mayors of uh, Lee County in particular, and also Collier, were involved in it. Randy Henderson has been elected to where he is the second vice president of Florida League of Cities. I had the pleasure of being on the nominating committee that voted on it. But that means that we'll have, in two years, he'll be the president of the Florida League of Cities, which is, I, I don't even remember the last time it's ever happened. Second thing is, <clears throat> the, for the third or fourth year in a row, Florida League of Cities, one of their number one main priorities is water. And the committee that I'm on, which is called uh, uh, Utilities, Natural Resource, Public Works, we made water the number one priority again. And it's based, and I tried to get flooding in it, but it's water quality and it's affordable drinking water. And that all, almost all the cities in the state of Florida that belong to the League of Cities, that's what they want. It's, 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 it's statewide. Um, so that, that's a good thing. Another little thing that came up at a previous meeting that's an interesting point. You'll hear people talking about what a big deal that we spent. We got the state to appropriate $680 million dollars for water in the past session, which is a big deal. Actually, DeSantis asked for 625 and he got 680. But in 2005, 
The budget today, the total budget of the state of Florida is 98 billion. Back in 2005, it was 25 billion. Water wasn't as big a problem, and guess what? They spent very close to the same amount of money on water in 05 that we just spent its banner headlines. So percentage-wise, it's less. So but I thought that would be interesting to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Fred, for that. And uh, it's been touched on here, but of course, we're uh, very proud to welcome uh, the new Lee County Library, uh, downtown Old 41, and that will be Monday the 26th at uh, 10 a.m. So please, public's welcome. There'll be quite a, a lineup, uh, former mayors, uh, current mayors, members of council, and dignitaries will be there, certainly from the Lee County Commission and elsewhere. Are there any updates maybe on the RSV? P list, Arlene, if you wanted to mention. You know, we have several of our former council members attending, our former mayors attending as well. And we've also invited all of the library task force to attend. Right, wonderful, thank you. So we certainly hope you can join us there at 10 a.m. And uh, obviously, as you know, we took a break here today to go uh, see the G Governor DeSantis and uh, Mayor Ruane, I guess, as an update with the Florida League of Mayors, and that was a good update, Fred, with the Florida League of Cities, has um, this past week become the new president of the Florida League of Mayors. And uh, there again, number one issue, water. And uh, there are pieces of, some of you have heard me talk about this, and I'm just gonna mention it quickly, and then we can go on to our zoning meeting. Uh, right now you have a White House that is, has committed support for the Everglades. You have a United States House of Representatives that has committed support for the Everglades. It's over in the United States Senate right now to see they're contemplating what they're gonna come back with for a number. You have a governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, you have a Florida State Senate, you have a Florida State House, and you have over 400 mayors rowing in the same direction. No pun intended on this issue. And so I would say to everybody, anybody, reach out, reach out. Uh, anybody that you know in this arena, uh, the gas is on, but the mo everybody in this room knows people that could be influential in this process. And I would just ask you to do that as a grassroots exercise, if you so agree. Um, so looking forward to that, I do know that M Mayor Ruane is organizing a trip to Capitol Hill with the mayors specifically to talk to the United States Senate. So with that, um, is there anything else, Council, for the good of the order? Okay, uh, we need to approve approval of the minutes. So moved. Back. For, okay, for, for July 30th and August 7th. August 7th, our 20th, my 20th anniversary and your anniversary, right? August 7th, is it or? Yeah, right. It is August 7th. Okay, uh, there's been a motion and a second. Is there additional discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Caramba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman O'Flynn? Aye. Okay, now if anybody is here for the city council meeting portion, is there anybody here that would like to speak at public comment? If not, we're going to move on from public comment and move on to zoning. Yes, sir. Please come up for public comment. Thank you. And if anybody else, please line up because we're just trying to move along. Mr. Mayor, afterwards. Yes, Derek. I think what we should do is we should adjourn the city council. We're going to adjourn for two minutes because the video feed has to over. change. And uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be quick. Yes, sir. No, welcome. I'd like to thank Mr. Feeney for his support of the Cocoloba chapter of the Florida Native Plant Society. Yes, sir. We're all volunteers. We do more than just native plants. We have a tremendous amount of outreach, and your senior leadership of the Cocoloba chapter is in Bonita Springs. Great. So we hope the city supports us. Absolutely. And Matt, please, I don't know if you guys meet or how you organize, but please let me know. I'd like to be. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being here. Anybody else for public comment? Okay, seeing none, um, motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Two minutes. Two minutes.